Hello, friends. Welcome back to another uh, live story time from the Driehaus Museum. My name is Valerie. I'm here in this gallery. Uh, today we are in the Driehaus Museum, which is where the Nickerson family used to live. This was a, an old mansion. Um, and the Nickerson family would live here and they would even read in this room or Mrs. Nickerson could have her closest friend come to this room and she could entertain them. She could also plan the day in here with some of her servants that worked with her. Um, and last time we were actually able to open the desk just there and we could see inside. Today, we're not going to do that. Do that. Um, but if you wanna see the inside of the desk, you can go to our other story time, which is still up on the YouTube page. So, today we're going to read a different story. The story we're going to read is called Anna at the Art Museum. And what's fun about having a story about an Anna is that we have an Anna that works here at the museum with me. So uh, we are going to read Anna at the Art Museum and Anna is going to go to the Art Museum with her, uh, with her mom. She is a very energetic girl, so she might get in a little bit of trouble. So let's read the story and we can find out what happens with Anna at the Art Museum. Anna at the Art Museum, written by Hazel Hutchins and Gail Herbert and illustrated by Lil Crump. First page, here it is. Anna was not happy. Everything at the art gallery seemed old and boring. Anna would have to entertain herself. Roar, she said to the lion. Quiet, please, said the attendant. Peekaboo, she whispered to the baby. Careful, said the attendant. Oh no, she almost knocked something over over there. When Anna carefully lifted her foot onto something that looked like it was for children, the attendant shook his head no and pointed to the sign. The sign says, do not touch. Here they are by that sculpture. So Anna and her mother had a talk. It was one they'd had earlier, but perhaps Anna had not listened quite as closely as she should have. No shouting, no running, no climbing, no touching. After that, Anna pretended she was a small bush in a forest of tall trees. One of the trees swayed to the side. And there was something interesting beyond. Anna moved closer and closer. Anna didn't know paintings could have alarms. Bing, 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 bing. Everyone turned and stared. Anna quickly ran away. On the second floor, Anna found a window nook. While her mother looked at paintings, Anna gazed longingly out at the street and at the harbor beyond. If only the museum could be turned inside out or the world outside in. In the next gallery, she pulled out her snack. But why was the attendant looking at her that way? Are you hungry? She asked. We can share. He was not hungry. No eating, he said with a firm voice. She could only drink at the water fountain in the hall.
when she saw the half open door. And when the door is half open, it is very hard not to wonder what lies on the other side. Hannah, cautioned her mother softly, no entry means we aren't allowed. Diane Saint says no entry right there. Once again, the attendant was walking toward her. This time, however, he surprised her. It's not busy today. They might let you in. Would you like me to ask? It was like a secret workshop. Here, art was studied, repaired, and cleaned. As years of grime were removed, the face of a young girl slowly emerged. It was a bored face, a grumpy face. And Anna knew that girl. She hurried to thank the attendant. She's just like me, Anna told him, or I'm just like her, which made the attendant smile. And now something had ha changed. On the floor above, Anna danced patterns of her own. She felt color swirl around her, but it had been a long afternoon. Even her mother was ready to go home. They took the fast way down, pausing only long enough for Anna to whisper to the lion, I'll be back. Then they pushed open the wide gallery doors and Anna skipped through, letting inside and out flow together. I don't know about you, but that was a fun story to me. Got to see a lot of different things that Anna was doing that she probably shouldn't have been doing. So sometimes we have rules and we definitely have rules at museums and museums have these rules to keep you safe and to keep the art safe. So when Anna was in the museum and she was told not to touch anything, it's because we wanna make sure that we preserve the artwork and we don't want to get too close to artwork because if we fall we could break the artwork. Anna pulled out a snack and most museums you can't have food throughout the galleries because if you have food with the artwork then if you then if you leave crumbs behind ants could come and get the um hello Miss Anna can I help you with something? No? Um are you able to just open that desk? Do you have permission to open the desk? Okay, well, I can't let you open the desk without permission, even though you do work here. So if you get permission, I can let you open the desk, okay? Thank you. See, so even here at the museum, if we work here, we still have to follow the rules, meaning we can't bring food out onto the floors and leave crumbs for ants and bugs to find. Because if they find the crumbs in the galleries, they might decide, the bugs might decide that some of the artwork might make a tasty snack too. So the rules are there to make sure that we um, don't hurt the art or ourselves. Now in the, muse in the book, Anna kept talking to an attendant. The, uh, we have people that work at our museum too. We call them guides. Now, I find that a lot of the people that work at museums are very friendly. Our guides here at the, our museum love telling stories about the history of the museum. We love talking to um, all of our guests and learning things from our guests as well as teaching things to our guests. And we also love sharing things for people to look for, like a scavenger hunt. So if you come to our museum and visit our museum and ask one of the guides for something to look for, we can give you a lot of different things to look for. We have lions in a lot of the rooms in the museum. We also have dragons you could look for, flowers you could look for. And um, sometimes there's different things in the galleries for our exhibits. And we can find things for you to look for there too. So there's always something for you to look for. And you can always ask a guide any of your questions. Um, in the book too, 
we also have some pictures in here of real live art. And the real live art in here, um, we have, see, so we have pictures in the pictures, we have the drawings, but we also have the pictures of real life art. So if you go to the back of the book, you can actually find these paintings. And you can go to these different museums and find these paintings to look at. There's um, a museum in New York that has that's in here represented. There's also a museum in Paris. Hello, Miss Anna. Did you get permission to open the desk? You did. Oh, you did. Great. Thank you. Go ahead and open the desk. Oh, but uh, where are your gloves? So we, as curators and as people that work in museums, if we want to touch something, we do put on protective material so that we don't damage the material at all with the oils in our fingers and the dirt too. So she's gonna put on some gloves. So we have real live art that you can go visit. And I think it looks like Miss Anna's bringing us a piece of real live art to look at and share with you, right Miss Anna? Okay, so this, this is a paperweight. Oh, a paperweight is something that you would have in part of your desk set. So it might be something that lives in your desk and it's just as it sounds, it's a weight for papers. So if you have papers um, sitting outside or if you have papers in your, uh, scattered around your house and you need to make sure that they stay where they are and don't fall off any desktops, you would use a paperweight like this and put it on top so that the papers don't fall. Uh, this paperweight is made by the Tiffany Studios, which began in 1902. Um, Tiffany Studios is very well known for their stained glass pieces. Um, this has br bronze that has a nice swirly pattern to it, and then that I believe that's glass on the inside with another nice pattern. Um, thank you, Miss Anna. So that was Miss Anna. Thank you for sharing with us and following our museum rules. Um, Miss Anna was able to interact with some art. And in the book, Anna and, um, and some of the people were actually also interacting with the artwork. One of the people that was interacting with artwork was actually a school group tour. And two girls decided that they looked like a girl's in the painting. So they were taking a selfie. Look at this. So they're wearing the same clothes. So they decided to take a picture in front of it because they matched the painting behind them. Another fun part is when Anna was playing and that she was a bush in a forest and that there were trees around her. So the legs of, and pants of these people around her look very similar to the trees that are in the painting. And then the last one I'm going to show you, because there's a lot of examples in this book, is the very last page when Anna and her mom are sitting on the bench. They're doing the same poses as the painting behind them. Now, I don't know if they know they're doing the same poses, but that is definitely very, very similar. So very fun to interact with art in that way. Um, and in this book, Anna also talked about making the outside and inside flow together. Um, and on the same page, we have some flowers. I don't know about you, but normally I see flowers growing outside. Of course, there are indoor plants and vases of flowers, but the majority of the flowers that you normally see are outside. So we have some paintings of the outside being on the inside. We also have a picture of Anna looking at the outside from the inside, probably hoping that she was outside here. And then on the same page, we have paintings of the outside here on the inside. And the last page, even Anna says that she wants the inside and outside to flow together. So today we're going to make a, we're going to make a fun project where it's going to be bringing the outside inside with an indoor material. We have Miss Abby coming in. She's going to teach us how to make or an origami outside thing like a lion and a flower. I'm looking at Miss Abby. She's coming in. Come on in, Miss Abby. Hello. This is Miss Abby. 
Yes, my name is Miss Abby. I'm one of the guides at the museum, which means I take people around the museum and I teach them various different things about pieces in the museum. Great. And you're going to teach us some origami today? Yes. So the first thing we're going to do is the flower, actually. Great. And so you're going to need a piece of paper that's cut into a square. This is very important. Every single piece uses a square base. Which means that every side is the same length. Mm -hmm. And for our purposes, we have a double-sided paper, but it doesn't actually matter when you make it for yourself. It's just really fun, and it's also easier for you guys to understand what we're doing. Yeah. So you don't need it to have two different colors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is the sunflower. Okay, we're gonna make a sunflower. So in order to do that, we need to fold it in half with the colored side outside into a hot dog bun. So folding it into a hot dog like this. Just like that. And when you're done, you need to unfold it, turn it 90 degrees, and fold it into a hot dog again. So I folded it into a hot dog this way. So mm -hmm. now I'm gonna fold it into a hot dog this way. Yes. Okay. And so when you're done and you undo it again, you should have a nice four square grid. A four square grid. I got it. So when you're done with that, you want to put it down on your palm so that the color side is down. Or so that all the folds mm -hmm. um, or are any going flat surface like mm -hmm. a table. And you want to fold in each corner to the middle point that's made by the two lines you made, that middle crease point. Okay. Just like this. And do that for every single corner. Okay. So we do that four times. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first one looks like this. Now, Abby, while we're folding, what does origami mean? So origami means paper folding. It comes from Asia. We're not entirely sure about the origins because paper started in China, but origami is Japanese in origin, the word. But it started there and was brought over to the West in about the 16th century. So it's been around for a really long time. Okay. So there's a bunch of different folds and patterns that anyone of all ages can follow. So it's been around for longer than this house has been. Around. Way longer. Okay. So when you're done with all those nice. folds, you should have a smaller square. And one of them is flat and the other one will have the flaps on one side. All right, I got it. And what you need to do now, and this is a little complicated, is fold back the flap, but only a, about a finger lengths away from the edge. So oh. you don't want to fold it all the way back. So I'm making a new fold. So I yes. put my finger here. So it looks like this. I do this. Mm -hmm. About a finger length. And you want to do that for so every it single looks like corner. like that. Okay. So just keep on doing that for every single flap. So I'm not folding the flap in half. I'm folding it almost, almost more than in half. Yes. Okay. So I use a finger length because you don't want a lot. Right. So it's going to look like this when you're done on one side. And if you turn it over, we have your sunflower. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put this down because we have another piece of paper to use. Okay. This one is green because we're going to make a stem out of it. A stem? Cool. Mm -hmm. A stem for the flower. Yes, for the sunflower. Great. So this one you will be folding in half, but instead of like a hot dog, you're going to make a triangle. Okay. So, so from corner to corner, corner instead to of corner, side to side. We're going to do a diagonal one. Yes. This kind of looks like a taco to me. I always think of a paper hat whenever I make it. Or this. a paper hat. When it's a triangle. Mm -hmm. okay. When you're done with that, you need to unfold it. And this is a little weird to explain, but you need to take one side and fold it into the middle so, so it looks like you're making a kite. So when I fold it, I want to make sure that the, the paper lines up with the line that I made with the fold. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you want to do that for both sides. Both sides. Okay. One. And... So then when I'm finished, does it look like a kite? It looks kind of like a kite. Okay, yeah. good, because that's what mine looks like. And when you're done with that, uh -huh. you need to take the right side right here and fold it in half to that middle line one more time. Okay, so but just, just the one. right side. Okay, yes. so then I'm going to fold this one more time, and it's going to line up again with that line like so. along the middle. Mm-hmm. 
So we made that line. We folded the first fold just to get the line. Mm -hmm. But you are actually going to fold in half again oh. on that line. Okay. So you're going to fold in half like that. This so it like looks this. like this. And then you're going to fold it one more time. Mm -hmm. It looks like this. And okay. then so this top part is the leaf and the bottom part is the stem. So you need to bring the stem up. So fold it up like so. So it's pointing up at a bit of an angle. So I'm folding up towards the one little piece here mm -hmm. so that it's flat on this side and the folds are on this side and I'm folding it up over the other folds. And then you want to turn and it this around. this is a leaf, so I want to make sure that it looks like a leaf. There we go. Mm -hmm. And then you want to turn it around and you've got the stem and leaf and you just put on your sunflower, get a tiny bit of tape to tape it in the back and you have your completed sunflower. I did a little crooked, but <laughs> it looks really cute. Yep. Thank you. Are and we gonna make another one? Yeah, Ooh, so fun. like you said, we're gonna do a lion this time. Yay. So this time we're gonna have a slightly different pattern piece of paper. And this one actually has two colors, one solid kind of yellow color and a pattern. But they still don't need to have a pattern no, they don't. or two different colors. In fact, the line is helpful when it has less of a pattern, especially on one side, because we're going to draw on it. Perfect. So make sure to get a pen out as well. Got it. So this one, we're going to actually fold like the stem in half to make a triangle. Triangle. I, I can do that. But Done. this time we're going to unfold it and like the previous one, turn it and fold it again. So we're going to make an X inside of the box. Yes. You're okay. going to have four triangles instead of four boxes when you open it up okay. like this. All right. Okay. Now, once you're done, we're going to actually face, have the color side facing you, have one of the points pointing down, and fold up about two finger lengths up along one of those creases to make a tiny triangle in a flat so bottom. Just like Putting up the small, a small corner, just mm -hmm. one corner. And, the, and that's about two fingers. Yep. Okay. This one is a bit complicated and you want again about two fingers width to fold in on both sides to make the ears. So let me just do it to show you. So it looks like this. Okay. So I'm going to make it so that this line looks like a floor, like the horizon line, and it's gonna go up. So this is still a triangle. This is a, okay, so then this one is gonna go into, and it's also gonna be straight across like that. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing we're going to do when you're done with that is remember this center line that you folded up previously? Yep, like that. You're not going to fold it down like that. Oh. What you're going to do is actually fold it down about a finger length downwards from it in half. Okay, so it's like going to be so. a little, so I want the, I want this tail to be a little bit longer. Yes, because oh. you're making the mane. That's what this oh. back part is. Mm -hmm. cool. So it's going to look like this when you're done. Yes. Mm-hmm. Cool. And now that you've done all the folding, you need to take out your pen. Oh, we're done folding? Mm -hmm. Okay. Take out your pen. Got it. Draw on some eyes. Where? On the face part right here. Oh, eyes. Draw on a nose, a mouth, some whiskers, and a mane, and of course some, some ears right on that blank part, and you've got yourself a lion. Ta-da! Cute! And that's the last of them. Oh, thank you. Thank you for teaching us how to make those origami um, papers, Miss Abby. No problem. All right. Well, that's all we have for today. Thanks for joining us for this, this story time live. If you have paper that you folded along with us, or if you want to show us any origami that you make at home, if you want to send pictures of it to info at treehousemuseum.org. We would love to see your creations. Until next time, my name is Miss Valerie. You can find me in an art gallery. Um, and then this was Miss Abby, our fun guest. And our guest, Miss Anna, has 
already left to do other fun things. So until next time, bye.